Good day to you all. This is Pastor Peter from the Booyah Back Chapel in Central Western Queensland. Something different this week. Some of you will know that we adopted a new rescue dog recently. We had to get our old little dog put down due to ill health some weeks ago. While the facts of this story are accurate, I've had to redesign the photos of the animal management facility in Mount Isa rather than drive 600 kilometres there and back for a few photos. The little dog we adopted was a stray and was not claimed, so was therefore put up for adoption. The staff of the animal management facility knew the dog as Moo Moo, probably, we think, because she looked like a Frisian dairy cow, black and white. There are some similarities about our adoption of this little dog and God's adoption of us. And I was encouraged when I thought of these, and trust you will be too. We changed Moo Moo to Lila, for starters. Reminds me that Jesus changed the disciple Simon's name to Peter. And in the Old Testament, Abraham, Sarah and Jacob received their new names. For most of us, however, our given names may stay the same, but we are new creatures inside. As the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And that's a great thought, isn't it? Lila's past is a thing of the past. The new has come. Everything new. New name, new family, new boss. Lila was adopted into a family, our family, with all the rights enjoyed by other members of the family thanks to the generosity of Lila's new mum and dad. Lila, by the way, had no difficulty stepping into her new privileged position and was soon on the bed rearranging everything with great enthusiasm and energy. She is automatically assumed that certain rights are hers, for example, the right to comfort, trying out all the doggy accommodation as well as the bed, and the right to being provided for. She unhesitatingly lines up for her daily bread. In her case, mince meat and dried doggy biscuit things. She is indeed enjoying the good life. Reminds me Jesus said that he had come to give us life, a good life. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10, quotes Jesus as saying, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. As children of the King, spelt with a capital K, we have, in a greater way than Lila, what we need for living the good life plan for us, thanks to our generous and loving Father. Lila cost us a princely sum. I'm not telling you how much, but one has to pay certain adoption costs plus vets, fees, etc. Reminds me of the cost of our adoption. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 20, and I quote, you were set free from an empty way of life. You know that you were not bought with things that can pass away like silver or gold. Instead, you were bought with the priceless blood of Jesus Christ. Wow, we're that special. God wanted us that much. Lila is still a pup with much to learn. She is what we would call a work in progress. Just this morning, she stole one of my wheat bicks from my plate. I've also had to get the fly spot out when she wouldn't get off the bed. You know, we too are a work in progress. While we become Christians by encountering Jesus, choosing to go his way and turning our backs on our old ways, we are not perfect, just forgiven. And like a gardener, our Lord prunes us, who are like branches on a vine, so that we develop character and what the Bible calls fruitfulness. For him, look up what are called the fruits of the Spirit. And we find them in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility and self-control. I trust we are showing those in our lives. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 10, and I quote, For we are God's masterpiece. Some versions, by the way, use the word workmanship. We are... God's workmanship or masterpiece, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. 
there's a song about this and I'd like to read the words to you and I'm playing the music in the background. He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. Lila ran away the other day and I went looking for her. Reminds me of us, lost mankind. God sent Jesus, he came looking. As the Bible says in Luke's Gospel 19 verse 10, quote, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. It's such a great comfort that we have the option of accepting adoption. Romans 8 verse 15 says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves, instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Father. In 2 Corinthians 6.18 we read, and I quote, I will be your father and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Wow, what privileged positions we children of God have. Let's say a prayer of thanks. Lord, thank you for adopting us who choose to follow you into your family. Thank you for our privileged position, for your love, care, your daily provision, for hope and a bright future. Please help us to walk worthy of our Heavenly Father, to stay close and to remember that we are your masterpiece, your workmanship, making us more like yourself and growing our Christian character. Amen. Well, that's it, folks. Many blessings. See you next time. Goodbye.